Hey everyone, it's me Nita and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be working on some Etsy orders. I feel like it's been a little bit since I posted a work with me video. Um, I've actually been busy, busier than usual. Not necessarily busy with Etsy orders. I actually, the first like two weeks of July were actually really, really slow. One of those weeks I actually only got paid like $27, which was like barely anything um, because I pay for daily ads and when you're paying for daily ads and not getting any sales it kind of sucks so um, it was really really dead all of or for most of July but the last week and a half it's actually picked up quite a bit thank gosh I haven't sold any back to school items yet um, I'm still just selling a bunch of my rainbow shirts and my bell-bottom outfits. However, even though I was super slow on Etsy, I made sure and used that free time to um, add more listings to my Etsy shop if you are new to my channel. Um, I usually run a PE800 and a Baby Lock Flourish 2, but recently, about a month ago, I got... A big big multi-needle so I've been putting that machine to work um, making a bunch of new samples and I've gotten two to th two or three orders on one of my new samples that I listed so I'm thankful that I, I'm making some sales on some of the new things that I've listed but I haven't made any back-to-school sales yet I'm hoping I will get some though um, I've added a few Halloween items to my shop. I still need to add a bunch more. Um, Designs by Juju, I think that's the website. Um, they have like a killer, killer Christmas in July sale and I literally bought like $120 worth of designs for 20 bucks. That's how good the sale was. So I bought a ton, a ton of designs that'll actually get me through all the way till Christmas. So. I have Halloween, I have fall designs, I have Thanksgiving, and I have Christmas designs. Now I still need to add a bunch more of the Halloween, the Thanksgiving, and the Christmas. And a couple more of my back to school shirts too, but I feel like school's starting up so soon, which is so crazy. Um, but I have a bunch more samples that I have to, be, that I have to make, so I kind of want to get through as many order, orders as I can tonight. Um, because then I won't have any orders that will have to go out for at least a couple days. So I can use that downtime to work on some more new listings and hopefully get some more new sales because as you guys know, all I really make is donut outfits and my like rainbow shirts. So I'm getting not burnt out on making those, but I want to make something new and exciting. So um, I want to just get more listings up. Um, we also got a DTF printer, so we've been making a bunch of new t-shirt samples for my Need It and Thread tees. Um, unfortunately though, the ink for DTF, I'm having trouble finding any ink that's compliant, so I'm not able to make any kids t-shirts at the moment, um, but me and Eric have been making a ton, a ton of new t-shirt designs for my Need It and Thread where I sell mostly just adult tees. Also, I used a lot of that downtime too when I was slow on Etsy. I officially, officially am now compliant for children's clothing. Um, a lot of you guys probably don't know, but you actually have to follow a bunch of rules and regulations and make sure that the stuff that you are creating for children is compliant and safe for them to use or to wear. So it took me about two weeks to fully like dive into that and get all the paperwork filled out, go through all my supplies and make sure that all the supplies that I have are actually compliant and I had to write up a bunch of certificates for my t embellished t-shirts, for embroidery and HTV, for my baby blankets and for my bell bottoms. So that took a lot of time. I'm actually going to be showing you guys a whole video on that. So I'm going to be filming that one tomorrow hopefully um, for you guys to kind of show you the steps I took on how I became compliant. Um, so it's a hopefully it's an easier process for you because I didn't know a lot about compliancy. Um, 
I learned most of it from a Facebook group that I'm a part of and I'll link that down below. Um, I read a few ebooks as well and I watched a few YouTube videos such as Cindy Moncada's videos on like how to make tags for your clothing. So I just been doing a lot of research. So yeah, but I'm gonna go ahead and quit rambling on. I wanna kinda show you guys real fast though the shirts that we made today, or the shirt samples we made today. I am giving away two free t-shirts on my Facebook group to some teachers. We still need to do some more Halloween designs, so we have to make the shirts because we have to test out the print itself. So um, we're just gonna be giving away a bunch of t-shirts, so if you haven't already, go join my Facebook group. I still have to finish cleaning out my craft room, so I'm going to be giving away more fabric. I just haven't had time to go sit and go through it all. Let me show you the shirts we made, and then we'll kind of dive in on doing some orders. I'm going to be using this bad boy, Gordo, that's his name. Um, I'm going to be using him tonight, along with my P800 and my Baby Lock Flourish, too. So, uh, okay, I'm going to stop rambling. Let me show you these shirts real quick. So we've been making a bunch, a bunch of different shirts. Now, um, I know a few of you guys probably have a lot of questions on what DTF is. It's basically direct to film um, printing. So basically I will print a design onto like this plastic sleeve and then I would heat press the design onto the shirt. Now what's nice with this is you're able to use any type of t-shirt. You don't have to use just like polyester like sublimation. You can use cotton, you can use a cotton polyester mix, or you can just use an all polyester shirt. You can do it on bags, you can do it on backpacks, you can do it on basically almost any type of fabric. Um, so this is one of the t-shirts I'll be giving away to someone in my Facebook group. Um, this one, this one's going to be going to a friend. This one is also going to another friend. This one is also going to another teacher in my Facebook group. This one's for me because I love cows and my goal is to like hopefully one day have a big enough property to be able to have some cows of my own. But um, I wanted this shirt for myself. My friend loves true crime stuff so we made her this one. And then that's it for right now. Um, but yeah, we've been super busy <laughs> making a bunch of new shirts. Okay, so here are the orders we've been working on tonight and probably tomorrow morning. But I want to try and get all these out tomorrow. Look at one of my tags that I made. So I was just testing out like this little like tag gun that I have because I'm going to be adding some hang tags to my bell bottoms because you have to have certain types of tags for your clothing. So I just wanted to test this out and I actually really love how it turned out and I can't wait to start adding little tags to my bell bottoms. I actually feel a lot more legit as like a business owner I guess. At the bottom I put down meet CPSC safety requirements so when someone purchases from me they know that I am compliant and I am safe to sell children's clothing. But anyways, I have a unicorn baby blanket. I actually ran out of the back fabric that I typically use for this blanket, so I was gonna cancel the order, but I emailed the customer and we're coming up with a whole new design. So I'll have a new unicorn design um, added, added to my shop. So I'm excited to actually keep this out and just do something different for the customer. Um, I have a barnyard, a barn but a blanket that I have to do. I hate doing those, but because um, it takes forever. But I have some bell bottom pants. I have an outfit. This is, I already made the shirt today, but I added this new design to go with the donut bell bottoms. And I've already sold three of these, and I just listed these probably three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago. So I'm gonna do the bell bottoms to go with that order. I have another rainbow design. I have just the shirt and then they want 
a 5x52 strip of the um, bullet fabric because I'm assuming they're going to make like a headband for the child to match their outfit. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to start making headbands too using this fabric to kind of offer it as a set with the, um, the outfit because if they're going to go ahead and purchase the fabric to make it themselves why not offer it for them so they don't have to make it. It just saves them a step. So I'm thinking of practicing and making bows out of the bullet fabric. I still have not received my donut bullet fabric yet and it's been exactly three months. I actually just bought another 50 yards and I did the ex expedited shipping. So hopefully it gets here before the other fabric's supposed to be here. So I'm having trouble finding the donut fabric. Luckily, um, one of my followers sent me some donut fabric, so that helped me out get a couple orders out. So, thank you if you're watching this. Thank you for sending me that donut fabric. You don't know how much it helped my little small business. Um, and then I have a monster truck. And then I have two adult um, monster themed shirts. So, I'm going to be busy. I'm thinking tonight... I'm just going to do all the embroidery stuff and then the bell bottoms. And then I think the HTV stuff I'll save for tomorrow morning. We'll see how much I can accomplish tonight. It's already 1130, so I don't know how much I'll be able to get done. But I have three machines. So hopefully these three machines uh, can get the job done tonight. Um, that's kind of like a little brief overview of like my first impressions of the buy machine um it's definitely a big big learning curve um it's much different than my single needles um i had some trouble in the very beginning learning how to use the machine but with watching some youtube videos and being part of the buy group um we were able to troubleshoot and solve most of the issues we were having hoops too for this machine the machine came with a set of these green hoops and the circular ones they're not too bad they do lose a lot of like space for the design i guess you're not able to fit like the whole design like with a name an applique number and like a design it's really hard to fit it all on that hoop so i was using like this bigger hoop but for the kids t-shirts it was just way 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 too big and it's actually this hoop is actually really really hard for me at least to get it hooped onto the machine but i did get some mighty hoops i got an 8x10 i still want to get i believe it's like a 5x7 seven or 7x7 seven seven, and then i want to get the 10x10 but I've been using this and oh my god, it is such a huge difference between the buy hoops. Like, <laughs> Mighty Hoop is like where it's at. So, um, if you don't have a multi needle yet, when you do get one, I highly, highly recommend Mighty Hoops. Um, this, it just makes hooping so much easier and so much faster. Um, we did get the hooping station. Um, for the kids shirts and then for like the 5x5 hoop to be able to do like little pocket designs. Um, we got that. Um, this is going to be perfect for Eric because he's not a pro yet at hooping shirts. Um, for me, this is super easy. I was able to get it down like on the first try. Um, so when we get like bulk orders for like businesses and stuff, it'll make hooping a lot faster. But I need Eric to like put it together for me um but yeah I highly recommend the mighty hoops like they're pretty awesome that's all I can really say it just has made my life so much easier when I was using this hoop I wasted probably about like four shirts trying to like get the um design stitched out because the shirt kept getting stitched on to the back I guess if that makes sense because this hoop is so big and those circular hoops are too small, so if I wanted to do like the like the right size design, I would have to use this one because there's like no in between. And this hoop was just way too big for like the two T, three T size shirts, and it would actually like cause the shirt to stretch, and the machine would get caught up onto the back of the shirt and stitch through the back of the shirt, and I had to waste 
so many shirts. But since using this, I haven't had any errors. Um, but I still need to edit all the designs, upload them to all of my machines. Now for the buy, um, you use DST format, basically the Tajima format. And when you get Mighty Hoops for the buy, you'll get the Tajima Mighty Hoops. And then for the brother and the baby lock, it uses a PES format. So these two different machines, that's the only downfall about having two different types of machines is they use different formats. So it's, it makes it a little bit more tricky on like designing designs or editing designs because you have to go through and have double of each design, one for the PES and then one for the DST. So um, yeah, and then I won't be using, I probably won't be using the Cricut tonight or the heat press. I'm gonna start rambling. I'm gonna go ahead and edit these designs and get them onto the machines. All right, so the lighting sucks over here in this corner. But I have one of the donut designs ready to go, or actually not ready to go. I still need to do like the thread colors and everything. So with a multi-needle, you have to assign each step to which needle you're going to be using or which color thread you're going to use. So I still have to do that. I have, I have the monster truck design on this machine. I have the barn design on this machine. I chose to put the barn design on this machine because there's a lot of like jump stitches and with this machine it cuts the jump stitches so that means less cutting for me at the end of like the embroidery design. So this design takes me like an hour almost to do. So I like that the machine can cut the threads for me because it makes it super easy. There's not a lot of thread color changes for this one so I don't mind cutting the threads. Um, I haven't used the buy yet to make baby blankets, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to do a whole video on that because I'm kind of curious how I'm going to do baby blankets on this machine. I'm not sure if I need to have the table that came with the machine out or if it's okay if like the fabric kind of like drapes down a little bit. I'm not sure, but my next thing now that I'm going to do is set the thread colors for that one, get these two machines hooped and ready to go. I'm going to have to use one of these circular ones. This is the biggest circular one and then it jumps over to this size. So the Mighty Hoop that I have is too big for a onesie. I still need to get I think the 7x7 seven seven, and this hoop's too big. So I'm hoping that I can, this design will fit in the hoop. I'm going to trace it to make sure that the needle doesn't hit the hoop because if it hits the hoop it could break your machine and I don't want anything to happen to my poor buy so I'm gonna trace it before I even start embroidering the design out. I totally recommend tracing it every single time before you do a stitch out just to be safe. I'm like extra paranoid about it but I like to test it every single time but I'm gonna go ahead and stop rambling and set these thread colors. So when entering in the colors I like to have like the steps up near me. You could always print this sheet out and have it, but I like to save paper and I just like to just use my computer to be able to see what steps that I need to do. So I know that the first six steps are going to be appliques. So I'm going to show you how to do an applique on the buy. Okay, so after I picked my hoop size, I'm going to go ahead and press OK and then I'm going to go to edit. Press OK. And then down here you'll see three little things of thread. And I know that the first six steps are going to be applique um, designs. And then I know after it's done doing the appliques, it's going to go straight to the number one. And that's going to be like this light blue color. So that's needle number 14. So I'm going to go ahead and just do 14 for all the tack down stitches. And then seven is going to be a satin stitch, but for so for the placement stitch and the tack down stitch, I'm going to press offset for those steps. So that basically tells the machine to stop. The hoop will come out a little bit so you can cut the applique um, design or cut off all the extra fabric that's on the applique. So I have my first six steps, which are the appliques. And then after it's done doing the number, it's gonna jump over to the donut and the donut is a tan color and that's gonna be needle three. Then it's gonna jump to the frosting, which is 
pink, which is number 15. Then it's gonna go and go to number 14 because that's the light blue color. And for these, like you can change out like the color so it matches whatever thread you have on that number. But because I'm constantly doing different designs on the machine, I'm like, I don't switch out anything because I'll have to do that like every single time. Or not every single time. But I'll have to switch it out frequently and I don't want to do that. So I kind of just leave the colors the way they are and I just know that like for tan, for the donut, it's it's number one, two, three. So I just know that number three isn't really yellow, it's really tan. So I have all the steps done. Um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and press OK. Press OK again. And then it is good to go. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and get all these hooped. Now for my minky fabric, I like to use cutaway. I was using cutaway for my shirts. But recently, I've been using um, poly mesh with a tearaway stabilizer. And I like how that looks a lot better because I could sometimes see the cutaway stabilizer through the shirt and I did not like that. So with this, um, the poly mesh kind of helps prevent you being able to see the stabilizer through the shirt. And then being, and by using both of them, it kind of adds that extra stability that cutaway stabilizer offers. So um, I'm gonna use these two with my shirt and then this cutaway stabilizer is gonna be for my blankets. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I have the onesie hooped onto the machine. I'm gonna go ahead now and press the trace button so I can see if the needle hits the frame at all. So basically I'm gonna hold down needle one and it's gonna go ahead and trace like the outside of the design so you can kind of see where the placement is as well um, on the t-shirt. So everything looks good with that. The needle didn't hit the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one started um, just because this one will be quick. So um, I'm gonna get this one going and then I'm gonna do the minky blankets next. I must say having a multi-needle is such a game changer. Um, I was working earlier today um, to get some orders out to the post office and I had all three machines running and the buy was just doing its thing. I didn't have to like keep an eye on it. But with these other two little machines, because I have to constantly switch out thread colors, like I'm so exhausted by the end of the day. Um, I'm like already wanting a second machine so I don't have to constantly switch out thread colors. And also, Eric has been using the machine quite a bit too for hats and um, all like his digitizing orders that he's been working on. He's been using the machine quite a bit and It's like it's my machine like dude. You need to stay away from it. Don't touch it. It's mine and he uses it a lot and I don't want him to use it. So We need to start saving up for a second machine. So The nice thing about it though because buy is so affordable um Getting a second machine will be a lot easier than trying to save up for one of those big name brand um, embroidery machines. So we'll be able to save up for a second machine a lot quicker. Um, so. What, two machines is less than one also? 
Yeah, so basically like two of these machines is the same price as one Melco. So, um, so far I'm loving the machine and I love this machine and I want a second one so my husband can have his own. Shoot, I might even want a third one so I can... Hold a two head. Eric wants a two head because he yeah. wants to do a lot of hat orders so a two head would be good for him. I personally want another one too for myself because these single needles, you know, they've helped build my business um, from the very beginning but it's exhausting when you have a ton of orders and you're constantly having to switch out thread colors and then because I make bell bottoms too I'm having these machines going. I'm trying to use my serger to make bell bottoms, but I have to constantly stop doing that to get up to go change out a thread color. So, it's exhausting. So I want something that's more time efficient and easier for me as well, because I am running myself thin, I guess you could say. Um, so, I want another machine already, but thankfully these machines are affordable. So it'll be a lot easier for me to save up for a second machine. Okay guys, so the shirt is done. Um, so far I've been only able to do the name and the applique part of this design. And this one, 
I have to start all over because the water soluble stabilizer decided to get caught in this little thing. Um, and I literally was standing right here dealing with this machine and this one started to act up. So I had to completely scrap the blanket. Basically, um, this is one of the bigger ones, so I'll be able to cut the mess up part off and use that portion of the fabric for one of my smaller blankets. So nothing will go to waste, but the only thing that was wasted was my freaking time. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get this name restitched out and get the thread switched out on this one. I don't have any tender touch, so I'll have to go to uh, Joann's tomorrow to get some tender touch. And I also need to get the back fabric to this blanket, my farm theme fabric, because I don't have a big enough piece. Because this blanket is one of my largest ones. It's a 32 by 52. So we'll be going to Hobby Lobby tomorrow to pick that up as well. So we're gonna have a fun day tomorrow going shopping at Hobby Lobby and Joann's, but I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work. Okay, so here is the shirt design. I still need to heat press it and add tender touch, but I definitely like using the no-show poly mesh because you can't really see the stabilizer um, behind the design. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and let these blankets finish stitching out. It's already super late, so I'm probably not gonna be able to start the uniform design. So tomorrow I'll be finishing up these two blankets, heading to Hobby Lobby, Joann's, and I'll try and get this shirt order done. This is just one pair of bell bottoms, so that should be real easy to do. This order is basically done. I just need to do the bell bottoms for that one, and then I have these two that I need to do. So I don't have too, too, too much to get done tomorrow. Um, as long as I get most of the embroidery stuff done, the HTV stuff with the Cricut won't take too long to do. And the bell bottom pants, I can sew those really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay guys, so it is the next day. I'm gonna be heading over to Joann's. The farmhouse blanket doesn't need to go out today, so I'm gonna wait to go to Hobby Lobby. I just don't feel like going to two different places because they're not close by each other. So, and I don't feel like driving. I have a ton of orders that I need to work on that need to go out today, so I'm just gonna work on those for today. But uh, I'm gonna head over to Joann's, get some tender touch. That's all I'm getting, guys. I'm not getting anything else. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Um, I would have recorded this in the house, but Mason was losing his mind before I left. Um, so he's just gonna stay home with his dad, and Jackson's gonna stay home with Eric, and I'm just gonna go and join myself at Joann's, even though I'm not gonna buy anything except Tender touch. That's it. But I'll see you guys when I get there. Back home from Joann's. Um, I am working on a unicorn baby blanket right now. So as soon as I got home, I got right back to work. Um, I'm gonna work on that. And then I have some HGV shirts that have to go out today. So I'm gonna work on those as well. And I have a bell bottom outfit that I want to get out today as well. So I'm just going to be working on those few things. I'm not going to try and get a bunch of orders out today. I'm just going to get the ones that need to go out today and whatever I don't finish, I'll finish later on tonight.
So that unicorn baby blanket is almost done. It has like two more steps. Um, and I'm working on a pair of baby bell bottoms. One thing that I love about having a multi-needle and one thing I hate about having a single needle, like when you're in the groove of working on orders and you're working on something and then you have to stop what you're doing to go switch out a thread color, it's really a pain in the butt sometimes. But I shouldn't complain. I must say though, having the multi-needle now is nice because when I am working on something, as long as the appliques are already stitched down, um, I can just work on whatever I need to work on. So I could be sewing, I could be do using uh, my Cricut to cut some vinyl. So you can multitask a lot better with a multi-needle. And as you can hear, my machine just stopped because I need to switch out the thread. And that means that I have to stop what I'm doing and go deal with that. So. It's a pain in the butt sometimes, but you have to love those little machines though because um, those machines helped me get my multi-needles, so I'm grateful for them. It just sucks when you're in the groove and you have to stop what you're doing. I could have used my buy to do this baby blanket, but I'm a little nervous using water-soluble stabilizer on my buy because even last night, um, the water-soluble stabilizer can get hooked onto that little little part where the needle goes through um, and I'm afraid that's gonna happen on my buy so I'm nervous about doing baby blankets I know I shouldn't be nervous but I'm just nervous about the water wall, water soluble stabilizer ruining or breaking my machine guys I think it's actually been almost one year since being active on YouTube again I did start my YouTube channel back in like 2007 I want to say but I didn't really post much and it was mostly all about like food content. Um, but I think it's almost been a year. That's crazy to think that I've been on YouTube for a whole year now. I don't know if it's just me, but sewing and using my serger is so relaxing. My embroidery machine tends to be stressful sometimes because you always have, sometimes I have mess ups. So even though I've been doing this for almost two years, um, I still have mess ups here and there with my embroidery machine, but at least with sewing, I've been doing it for so, so, so long. I've been sewing for like eight years now, maybe nine years, and this is just a lot easier for me to do and I have less mess ups this way. But sewing for me is like so therapeutic and so relaxing. I always love when customers like leave a review and have a picture um, of their kids wearing it because it's just crazy to think that there are people in this world that are wearing something that I created with my own two hands. So it's crazy. It's crazy to me. Okay, so I'm done with these two bell bottoms. Um, basically what I have to do now is add the tags to these. I'm gonna save that for another video because I wanna go into like really good detail for you guys on how to add tags to your clothing um, so stay tuned for a video on that but these are ready to go I just need to sew the tags on um, that baby blankets done now I'm just gonna work on the HTV shirts and then um, I have to sew one monster truck baby blanket and then I'll be done for things that have to go out to the post office and then I'll kind of work later tonight so basically like what my schedule has been like it's been I usually start work at like 10 a.m. and I work until the post office closes and then I start working again after the kids go to bed or I start maybe a little bit before they go to bed and get things started and then once they're asleep I'll continue working. Um, and then yeah, so I kind of just break up my day. I work from like 10 to 5 and then probably from 10 to 2 in the morning maybe midnight sometimes this depends how tired I am but that's basically what my schedule is like right now and it's working but I want to start working out again so I need to figure out a really good schedule it's really hard to stay on schedule when you're self-employed because you don't have to clock in somewhere and clock out somewhere so you're kind of just it's nice because you can work when you can want to work and you can work when it works best for you but you have to have a lot of like um, self-discipline to be able to stick with it because if you don't, you'll get behind and then you get stressed out and then you get overwhelmed and 
all that. So I'm still trying to like figure out a schedule that works best for me and for my kids. Um, and for my husband too, because he kind of works around my schedule now too. So we gotta figure out a consistent, steady schedule, but the nice thing about working from home and working for yourself is you can work whenever you wanna work. So I'm done with the baby blanket. Um, so now what I have to do is I need to add tags and I just have little satin tags that I made myself using my sublimation printer. Um, so I'm gonna be adding these tags to all my embellished shirts. So you're supposed to be adding tags to all of the embellished shirts that you make. So if you do HTV shirts, if you do embroidered shirts, you need to make sure that you have 
a tag on it with a batch number. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the batch numbers and what you need to have on your tags because I'm going to save that for another video that's going to be super detailed. Um, but basically what I'm going to do now is just add the tags and then package these orders up and take them to the post office. Okay guys, so I have my tags sewn in. I have my label and my size for my bell bottoms and then for my embellished shirts, I have the tags off to the side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and package these up. I still need to add hang tags to the bell bottoms, so I'm gonna be using these little um, cardstock cards that I made with my Cricut and then I got this little tag gun off Amazon for pretty cheap. So I'm gonna tag these up and then get these all packaged up. Alright guys, so I have my packages, I'm all hot and sweaty, um, I'm exhausted, but I still have a bunch of orders that I still need to do, but I'm going to wait till tonight to do those, but these ones are all done, so I'm going to go ahead now, 
go take these to the post office, cook some dinner, enjoy my night with my kids, and then back to work tonight. So I will see you guys next time. If you guys liked this work with me, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Um, have you been slow at all this month of July? If you have, just let me know down in the comments. And if you haven't, please let me know what you've been selling like crazy. But I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,